Okay, there you go. That was that one there, right? It was all make believe. That was all dream. JR is alive. All right, let's see. Where's the one I want to go? We saw that one. Yeah. No, I don't have Bohemian Gravity on this one, so we're going to stop this one here. Yes, I'm going to introduce myself. All right. But first, I'm going to get rid of this guy. Okay. All right. Let me know when you're ready. All right. Howdy. My name is Skip Bird. Wait, wait. I am Skip Bird. I'm actually Drib Picks. Drib Picks is who I am. Okay. And I am a Night Sky Network mentor. Watch out. I'm going to trip over that several times. There we go. As I wander over here. So, and I do wander around, so you will have to follow me every time. Okay, I'm a Night Sky Network mentor. It basically means I do a variety of things for the Night Sky Network in a way of helping other astronomy clubs get full use of the Night Sky Network. The Night Sky Network is a APL, or excuse me, ASP, an Astronomical Society of Pacific, NASA, JPL, .gov, if you want to call it that, that all quasi whatevers, and they'll yell at me for not knowing exactly what they are. Okay, uh, group. Astronomical Society of Pacific, I'm not going to go into all the background of that. You guys can look them up. They're bigger and older and got bigger budgets than you guys do, so you're still number two. All right? All right. And I always, you know how I always like to start out with a cartoon. So my cartoon today is, Dad, will you explain the theory of relativity to me? I don't understand why time goes slower at great speed. Well, it's because you keep changing time zones. See, if you fly to California, you gain three hours on a five-hour flight, right? You get there two hours after you took off. Well, so if you go at the speed of light, you even gain more time because you get there even faster. It doesn't take as long to get there. Of course, the theory of relativity only works if you're going west. Okay, only west. Gee, that's not what mom said at all. She must be totally off her rocker. Well, we, oh, good, we don't have any. We are all men here. We're better at abstract reasoning. Go tell her that. Okay. Unfortunately, my, my supervisor, not really my supervisor, the late, my mentor at the Nice Guy Network, Vivian, she's going to probably yell at me for using that commercial, but that's okay. okay. But that's all right. What I'm going to talk to you guys today about is how many of you were here yesterday for the uh, pocket solar system glow in the dark constellation map? Okay. Those are just two of the activities that you can find on the Night Sky Network. What, we, what I basically say the Night Sky Network is, it's a way to help you. You astronomy clubs, we're all, we're all different. We got some Novak here. We got some other people here, right? Other clubs. Yeah. We're here to help you make your club better. We have several ways to do that. One of the ways is we have little activities that you can do, rain or shine. And what have we had for the last four days? Rain. rain. All right. So we have more than enough activities. We kept everybody busy, happy, laughing, and making funny things or making things all week long if we'd wanted to. But we've never, since we started with the Night Sky Network in 2003, 2004, uh, we don't cancel activities or we don't cancel our astronomy events. They're all rain or shine, right? If it's clear, great. We're looking at the stars. We're looking at the sun, whatever, the moon, the eclipse, the transit, or whatever. If it's not, we're doing something inside. We're doing something outside. A lot of these activities can actually be done outside at the telescope. Well, you've got 25 people waiting in line to lean over and go, what are we looking at? Where is it? You know? And they're looking like this. They're going, where is it? Or they're, anybody ever notice how when kids look at a telescope, what do they do? They don't go like this. They go like this. You know, and I'm going, where are you looking? Right yeah, or they're trying to do this. Right, the younger kids trying to do this. Nice thing about solar observing is I can see the reflection of the sun off their eyes. So I grab their head and I wiggle around and I move it till I see it. Do you see something yellow now? <gasps> all right, all right. We sometimes, one of the activities is you hand out toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls to the people in line and say, see that sign over there? Look through there at it. It gets them looking down a hole or down a tube so when they get up to the eyepiece you do the same thing you did there you just lean over and look there all right so it helps them out those are just some of the things that the nice guy network has to help you do your thing there's also one i call like the, this program's called weed feed and grow your astronomy club uh, astronomy astronomy club weed feed and grow your astronomy club they have a variety of videos to help you out with uh looking at um what to do when the clouds, you know, like we're talking about activities. What to say, how to do some marketing, how they have on their website, it will actually help you with your memberships, 
when they're when their dues are due when they joined uh you have inner groups and stuff i'm going to quickly through look through some of the night sky network we'll flip through that website a little bit to show you and i have a short you know me and mr i don't like powerpoint kind of guy i do have a, some short powerpoint pictures we're going to talk about okay and we'll take that up here in a second all right but i want to kind of give you guys an overview of it uh, we sometimes credit or most of the time we credit the night sky network with the fact that we do over 150 outreach events a year and we see between 10 and 15 or more than sometimes more than 15,000 people a year at our out, at our outreach events. OK, we've been consistently one of the top five astronomers. This is the Westminster. Oh, by the way, I don't got the wrong shirt on. I got this one on. The eclipse is coming. 2014, 2024. You got your reservations already? Yeah. yeah all right. Called my hotel and they're going, what? When? We don't take reservations less than two years away or something like that. I said, OK. So I call them back about three months and say, hey, you're taking reservations for this eclipse yet? I did that to the one out in Nebraska a year and a half in advance. And after the third time I call them and go, you know, we're getting a lot of calls. Maybe we'll take reservations, okay? <laughs> they took my reservations. I've got 10 rooms. We turned it into a family, family event. So I've already started calling ta uh, hotels in San Antonio. All right, so. Uh, so that's where I used to live. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to talk about just right there's. 12 roughly 12 different toolkits you can get from the from the night sky network qualifications to get a toolkit a you got to do two outreach events every six months was that difficult oh by outreach outreach event could be you're out in your front yard playing with your telescope and your neighbors walk up and go what you doing hey i'm looking at saturn or i'm you know you want to look at saturn sure that's not Saturn. You got a picture up there somewhere. You know, we've all heard that. Now I tell them it's a drone with a picture floating off over there. Okay, all right. Now on cloudy days, I use a specialty uh, constellation. It's called the North American Open Star Cluster. All right, it's one of the few star clusters you can see during the day if you know where to look. And some people say they see up to fifty stars in that cluster. Okay, some of you might already know what that cluster is. What is it? What is it? The flag. Yep, the U.S. flag. If it's a cloudy day, you can't look at anything else. Can't look at the sun, can't look at the moon, can't look at the stars. But if you can find a flag, okay, put it in there. Tell them this is the North American Open Star Cluster. If the wind's blowing, you can see 50. Wind's not blowing, you might see only one or two. You didn't lie to them. You just, you know, piqued their interest. Like we never ask, hey, do you want to look at the sun? No. You ever seen a star in the daytime? Come over here and take a look. And they're going, you can see stars in the daytime? You know, I go, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, take a look. What do you see in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he says, it's a big orange. Are we, where is, are you looking to the side of the orange thing? <laughs> then the other question I ask him is, occasionally go, uh, if you can tell me what star you're looking at, you win a poster. Okay? All right? A poster or a prize. And if you notice that all these programs that I do, including up, I'm going to have, I don't have them put out right yet, but I'll have some stuff to give away in a second. Okay? I give away a lot of stuff. All right. I credit a lot of that to the fact that we are on the Night Sky Network. Again, we're one of the top five astronomy clubs. We bounce back and forth between Santa Barbara and some other people uh, for being number one. You know, who does their paperwork is basically what it boils down to. All right. You know, no jobs done until the paperwork's in. And uh, we go back there and I occasionally get boxes in the mail from I was talking to uh, the lady to Rebecca from the Air Space Museum about her spectroscope. One day I come home and there's a box sitting in front of my house. I open it up and it's a box of 400 spectrographs from NASA. The, the colored ones with the red and the sun and everything with the, the good diffraction lenses on it and everything. A little, little uh, scale on the inside and you fold them all up, and tape it all down. You know, all it has was a return, you know, NASA address. It was two years later before I found out who actually sent it to me. They saw me at a, at a program. They liked my program. They went online. We're doing something with the Night Sky. They went to the Night Sky Network, saw that my astronomy club and my name, but they saw the astronomy club was there, one of the, one of the top ones. So they said, hey, these guys could probably use this. Okay? They, those, they haven't made them since. And I just find I've, I've got my last seven <laughs> that I, you know, I've done programs with schools and day camps and cares and day cares and, and uh, uh, homeschool groups and associations. I actually do this. Some of what I'm doing here and some of the activities and stuff I do, I do this for profit. 
I am the uh, I am an outreach guru, as you can saw from my from my bio. I do this for fun and profit. Sometimes I'll do it for free, right? But how old are you? Almost 15. On his 15th birthday, guess what his dad's going to get him? He's going to get him an astronomy party, astronomy theme party. I'm going to be there with a telescope. We're going to make rock, water bottle rockets. We're going to get wet. We're going to make comets or something along those lines. And I'm going to get paid for doing his birthday party, right? Yeah. Right? And you're going to have a good time, aren't you? Right? right? You're going to have a good time, aren't you? See? That, now, that's something I've, I've modified it in, but the Night Sky Network has allowed me to do that, but it also allows you guys to do it. For example, you're standing at the, you're out there, you're showing people the sun, all right? And you got what? How many people in line? 20, 15, 20, 25? Guess what? Hand this to them while you're, while they're in line, hand a couple of them out and go, why are you waiting a second? Why are we looking at the sun? Isn't that dangerous? Did your mom ever tell you that? Of course, when somebody tells me that, well, mom says it's not supposed to be looked at, I'm looking at them and say, yeah, and you're supposed to pay your taxes, and that's not your wife, you know. <laughs> so, so they go, oh, okay, okay, all right, I understand. But it tells you about it on the back, okay. It's just something to hand out, okay. Here's another one. Uh, why does the magnetic, you know, magnetic sun, magnetic activity gives the sun its dynamic features? How do you use magnetism? And that's what I'm going to talk about. I've got two kits up here, Space Rocks and the Magnetic Sun with me today. I've got some other posters up there for some other stuff. That You hand this out. They read about it. What? I didn't know cars had magnets in them. What do you mean my cell phone has a magnet in them? There's no way my credit card has a magnet. They tell me not to get in near one. And a computer disk drive uses magnets? So you hand this out. You pass it around. Do something along those lines. Here is a whole bunch of other ones that come with the magnetic sun one. So, for example, some of them are water those spots. How long do sunspots last? What might you see on the sun today? If you could stand the heat, could you stand on the sun? You know, things along. No telescope. Oh, no. What can I do? Does the earth, how does earth energy escape the sun? And one of the other ones, how's the inside of the sun like a pot, spot, a pot of boiling spaghetti? Okay. So you can have these out singly, you hand them out together and go, here, well, there's 15 people in line. You hand it to the guy, third one back and say, here, and they look at them and they flip them and pass them around. It keeps them interested, especially if sometimes you end up, you're the only person there. And instead of the seven or eight people who are supposed to be there, you have 104. I've had that happen to me before. Yeah. No. Keep them busy while they're in line, okay? Uh, and that's if they're in line. We have a couple other ones here. We're going to do this one real quick just to kind of give you an example. This one's called Connections to the Sun. So gotta, first thing I want you to do, I'm going to hand them to you like this. Do not look at the back, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you the sun. Make the almighty one. Patrol M here. All right. Hand one out. Pass it around. Hurry up. Pass them out. Do not look at the back. All right? Pass around those to the rest of them, okay? All right? And this is just going to be a, this is going to be short action. Oh, no, it's going to be shorter than it takes longer to pass them out. All right. All right. Don't look at the back. Don't let other people see the back either. All right. Y'all ready? Okay. Stand up, son. All right. All right. Let's see. What's, what's your connect? Wade. Wade. What's your, what does you, now look at the back. I said, don't look at the back. What does your say? Ancient plants. Ancient plants. What's your connection to the sun? Photosynthesis. All right. So you would actually come over here and put your hand on the sun. Okay. All right. Come on over here and put your hand on the sun. This is all right. All right. What's yours? Cow. Cow. What's your connection to the sun? Without looking at the back. No. No. What do cows eat? Plants. Does the plants get their energy from the sun? So you come over now. Are you an ancient plant? No. So you're going to kind of hang out here. You're going to you can grab onto the ancient plant guy if you want. But what does yours say? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. What's your connection to the sun? It keeps cold food. No, 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 no. What's your connection to the sun? You're connected to this guy right here. Where does your electricity come from for that refrigerator? From coal or nuclear or something like that. Okay. So now you'd come over and grab onto the ancient plant guy. All right. What's your connection? What are you? Automobile. Automobile. So where would you be? Which is? 
ancient plant. So you'd come over and put your hand on the plant. All right, that's all we're going to do. I just wanted to show you guys a real quick that this is. A, now, if you look on the back, it tells you what your connections were. All right. And you have people do that, like hold it right here where they I'm Cole and everybody runs around and you see who gets connected to who. Yeah. You like that. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, thermal. Well, wait, how do you what's your connection to the sun? Thermal power plant. Cold, okay, yep. Yeah. Or if it's geothermal, still, what's your connection to the sun? A nuclear reaction. No, when the sun was forming, all right, the heavier elements were pulled in due to that. Your Earth happened to have those from them and the other collisions. So that's how you're, that's your connection when the sun was forming. So you are connected to the sun in that way. It doesn't matter. I didn't say how long ago. Okay. But that's just some of the things that you can do. It's some of the different things that we have here with the night sky network. Okay. This one here is part of the magnetic sun. This actually is supposed to set up there and clip to that. Notice these little white things that are sticking off the side. Those are prominences. It's white. So I use white. If it had been red, I'd use red. All right. There's a little magnets in there. And these are just bits and pieces of pipe cleaners. So I can pull them off when I'm done. There's actually, ooh, look. Here's the core, how, what the sun looks like. So I got a little model of, you can explain the sun, how the fusion happens in here. Uh, one, of the, one of the activities is the fusion magic trick. You take different colored foam balls and you whip them around. And they change colors as you fuse hydrogen into helium and helium into carbon and carbon into iron if you want to do that. Okay? You got to be good, though. Radio zone, connect zone. This is actually supposed to clip on up there, but unfortunately, I dropped it and it broke. That was my fault. My fault. I, just the other day, I did that, so I broke it off. But that sticks on there. So while they're talking about something, or while you're in line, somebody can be talking to the rest of the crowd about the magnetic sun. Or if it's cloudy, you can't see the sun. If we could see the sun, this is what we would see. Uh, anybody look through the spectroscope that uh, Rebecca had from the Air and Space Museum? She was the lady with the pictures from Chile, south of the Zerver, okay? Yep. She used the spectroscope to show you different areas there, chromosphere, the inner corona, stuff, stuff along those lines. So there's a lot of things we go, and I'm not going to go through a lot of them to explain that. I'm going to save space rocks for last because I like the space rocks best of all. Okay, now let's see if I can go over here. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like fancy PowerPoints and stuff. Oh, oops, because, see, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, trans slideshow from beginning. Ah, ah, it worked. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm done for today, all right? All right, the Night Sky Network. It's trying to close, bring. Ooh, look at that. Look, who's that? Westminster Astronomical Society. Seek. Was I? Who am I? Who am I from? What club am I from? Look at that. I'm in my own PowerPoint. All right. Yep, yep. That, the, ignore Chris. Chris is a, is a terrorist. <laughs> All right. He's our, he looks like a terrorist. He is a terrorist. No, actually, he works for the military against anti-terrorism stuff. But this is just some of the people. This is we're set up. Uh, this is where we're set up at the, uh, oh, this is the Carroll County Fair. We set up for the full length of the fair, five days. We set up, we, they give us a booth, or we set up a booth and everything, okay? And we just have people come out, and we look at, you know, whatever we got. We also have a, there back here, you can't see it, but that's a donation bucket, okay? Uh, we're now, have collected enough funds from just general donations and stuff like that. We're working on our third observatory. Again, a lot of this we credit to being part of the Night Sky Network. There's our banner. There is the eclipse. So this was last year's eclipse. And it says, in fact, last day to get your eclipse classes. You know, a dollar that we're not, we're not profits. So we don't sell anything. So if you donate two dollars, we thank you with a pair of eclipse classes. All right. Which, by the way, we got a bunch from the Night Sky Network. We got them from Google. We got them from NASA. We bought a bunch from, you know, wherever. We went through about 6,000 pairs. Okay. Okay. So it was a good one. There's Astronomy Day. Anybody recognize that banner back there? Huh? Magazine. Yeah, that's Astronomy Magazine. I happened to say something to Astronomy Magazine one day at one of the conferences. Guess what arrived in the mail? Their banner. Some people recognize Magazine. Most people just recognize this, this Astronomy on it. Okay? They got all kinds of stuff we're giving away here. There's the banners up there. There's a couple other banners. That's actually the solar banner, which I don't have with me today uh, on that. There's, all, there's my 12-inch daub with stickers covering all the gouges. 
All right? All right? So, again, that's just something that we do, and we do it because of the Night Sky Network. Okay? It says who we are. We dedicate this. 4 million visitors, 36,000 different events through 425 clubs in the U.S. Okay? You guys can be impressed with all the wording and later on. All right? Oh, hey, there I am. That's, you saw this before, Wayne Skibbers, NASA. He, I'm at NASA Mess. This is at one of the STEM festivals in D.C., 300,000 people over a three-day period. As fat, I make comments over 10 minutes. I had 20 to 25 people each time. Okay? Yeah, there you go. All right, all right. Here we are. Ah, you guys should all recognize those little white pieces of paper. Okay? All right? This is, I'm at, uh, this is one here. I think I'm at... Uh, oh, I'm at, this is a Bullis, a space camp that I do. Uh, and they're all making pocket solar systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's Texas, you know, guys from Texas. My, my, one of my favorite cartoons, Captain, it appears to be some sort of prim primitive tractor beam. Okay. And that is what I call the astronomy vehicle. This is the Cunningham Falls. That's why I use magnets. The banner sticks to the car with magnets. There's a table. I got my telescope and a chair. Have telescope. We'll do outreach. Okay. And that's, that's basically what we, that's it. That's, that's all involved. And people say, well, I don't know enough about outreach. I don't know enough about astronomy. I don't know anything about it. The Nice Guy Network has a variety of resources and stuff. You can do that. But guaranteed, you know 99%. If your first day in astronomy, you joined an astronomy club, you know more than 99% of the people who, you're going to come up and look through your telescope. Most of them don't know what they're looking at in the daytime, and it's pointed right at the sun. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. The most, only people who take Astronomy Magazine for more than a year actually know that. I mean, I can ask them, what's that banner from? Okay, they do that. Again, they support. This is Oklahoma City. There are International Observing the Moon Night, Sidewalk Observatory down in, down in Brick City. Uh, cars are all lined up out there. They had three to 400 people just out there doing something, wandering by. What are you guys doing? Okay. We actually had for the transit of Venus, we actually had a police officer stop by because there's so much traffic on the road from people trying to get in to see the transit of Venus through our telescope that he finally ended up just parking his car, turning his red lights on and going. <laughs> Stood there and did traffic. And then he also looked to, you got fog? All right. What? No, we don't got fog, do we? No, not outside. A storm? What are we going to do? Are we going to do this? How about just weird weather in general? <laughs> all right. Now, y'all know where that's from, right? If you do, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. You grab an outreach toolkit. Again, there are our 11 toolkits there. You go with more to come. Lock two events each quarter. Toolkits available for free to active clubs. Shadows and Silhouettes, Planet Quest, Supernova, Our Galaxy, Our Universe, the Magnetic Sun. Anything you need to cover, you can do it, okay, with their toolkits and stuff along those lines. And they make it fun. I've worked with them a couple of times on different toolkits, the Pocket Solar System, you know, some of the other stuff. And we have a great time with it, all right? Here's our latest toolkit, the Magnetic Sun. See, one of the ways is it's hanging off here. Now, notice the covers on the telescope. So that probably means it's cloudy, okay? Here's everybody's with their connection. What's your connection to this? There's the banner and everything. There's the little sun. You can see it there, okay? And all the things along the line. They, the, and I'll, I'm going to use the magnetic toolkit as one, okay? Because you're going to get a variety of things. You get some of that. You're going to get this nifty little the, the box. Won't, we'll not have the, the uh, compasses on there, but you'll put them on there. It all comes in here. There is your solar storm. Happens to have magnets on the back, so as it goes by the compasses, all the, magne all the magnets go like this. There's a whole little thing you can talk about. Like, <gasps> the sky is glowing in the middle of the night. Uh, radio communication that are blocked out. There's a whole little activity you can do with that. It, uh, everything also comes with its own explanation. DVD training manual. Which, sorry, it's on the wrong side. DVD training manual. And, uh, and a, what I call a supply manual. They give you a bunch of stuff, but... I don't think any one kit that they've ever given me that I've had to replace. And by the way, you'll notice mine are all beat up because I've been using them for the 10 or 12 years, a lot, okay? Uh, that they cost more than 15 or $20, maybe 30 or $40 if you're talking about the Space Rock one, to replace the stuff inside of it, okay? Here's our latest kit. 
telescope's eyes of the universe. Anybody ever ask you how a telescope works? Well, how does it work? Why does when, when I look into the telescope, why is it upside down? Why is it backwards? Why is it when I look in there? When I look in the front and you look in the back, why do I see your eye? All right. A little foam, piece of foam with some sticks in it. There's your focal point. If this is your head and this is your foot, guess what? You're looking through there, past focal point. There's your head, there's your foot. That's why you look upside down. Something just as simple as that is in this toolkit. See, uh, that's field of views. Ever try to explain field of view to somebody? You know, well, what's, uh, yeah, well, your field of view in binoculars, or your field of view tell, you know, it's, they're, they're, all right. This one here has several different holes in it, including the Hubble, all right, down there, which you have to keep putting a pin through because the paper keeps getting wet and swelling up, so you can't see it or anyways. That's how small a field of view it is, and you can use something like that. Field of view, it shows you the white circles, things on longer, see how they look, different things like that. I use simple field of view. One of the things we talked about is um, you talk about field of view. Put one hand up to your eye and look like this. Everybody do this. Look at me. One hand over your eye. Look at me. All right. See how much of me you can see? Take your other hand. Put it in front of this one. Still looking at me. Magnification change. Did the field of view change? There you go. That simple. Okay. Well, why do I want an 82 degree field? Why do I want a 62? What about 120 degree field of view? Did the magnification change or not? That's all you need to know. Again, those are things that you can, you can do with this stuff. So there, our very first tool, I love this one. This is the pocket solar system one, searching for planets, okay, things along those lines, Planet Quest. This was done before we ever found our first exoplanet. They modified it. Now they had sent out a replacement or for us, and then some, they changed the stuff on the website about now that we found the planets. And that's why I have the, a lot of times I'll show you the uh, um, acapella science uh, Kepler one you know exoplanet one where he's talking singing to the soon tune of Aladdin which is the one we're going to see or we're going to do the uh, 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 microwave background one but that gives you something to look at gives you explains it to you shows you everything along those lines okay aliens I know I know you've all been asked do you believe in aliens right or have you seen any aliens I, I look at people straight and I said, you're an alien. I'm an alien. What? Yeah, you're an alien. Were you born right here on this spot? No. How about in this room? No. You're an alien. Right? If you weren't born there, you're an alien. I was born in Oklahoma. That's pretty alien country as it is, you know? Well, and I, 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 my, I, usually used, I used to use this in Oklahoma whenever I go visit anybody, like Texas or Nebraska or anything like that. But now I can use it because I'm in West Virginia. My joke is, you know, when I leave Maryland, come to visit you guys in West Virginia, I raise the IQ in both states. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay. So life in the universe, are we alone? The Drake equation, right down the road. The Green Bank, right? Green Bank, we have all this. Again, this, important note, I like this, important note. This is just a guess, okay, all right? But it talks about the, the different worlds, water, every world, stuff like that. All the extremophiles, it's got everything you need in there and directions on how to use it. Little short videos on connect these two together. Put this one over here. If they ask you this question, uh, as we talk about, Brenda, the, the president of the astronomy club, she joined the club about four years ago. She actually met me at a library program where I'm just out front of the library, just setting up in the daytime to show people the sun. All right. I have my little scale model kit from the Night Sky Network. All right. I have a couple of these other things to show them. Why are sunspots dark? I got a little, little activity that explains all of that. And she thought that was pretty interesting. She showed up, and three years later, she's now the president of the Astronomy Club. And she does a lot of outreach. Okay. She's my, uh, what is it called, my Padawan. No, no. So doing all those things. So she knew that. And right down the road, you got the Drake equation. That was, again, are there aliens? Yes, there are. You are one of them. There's the solar system banner, scale models. Now, I have all the stuff. I was going to put a scale model walk up to here. And by the way, the front gate would have been about <laughs> Neptune. Okay. Pluto is 2.9 miles away. And that's the scale model of the, that moon there. At that size sun, Earth is a one centimeter ball 120 yards away, longer than a football field. Okay. And those are just some scale models to that size sun. They got orbits in the back, which happens to also work with the pocket solar system 
Okay, if you're about five seven, your scale model matches the banner on the back. Again, that's all this stuff comes for free. What was that? What did I say? Free. For free. Yeah, I was making sure you're not asleep. Okay, all right. Space rocks. All right. Talk about space rocks, <gasps> asteroid, comets, and meteorites. Okay. Or, oh, look, we've got that banner right there. I've seen that one before. Okay. We call it, well, has there been any place where meteors have hit? Well, you will flip that banner over, and it's this side over here. And there's probably, well, there's 120 that we know of, but there's probably 30 or 40 in North America ourselves, which is, the, you know, they mentioned the dinosaur one here and the, one of the other ones out there, okay, all right, that we have found. They give you, now, they didn't give me this one, but they send you a kit with meteorites in it. Now, this one, I was doing this meteorite program, and a guy who deals meteorites gave me this one. This is a nickel iron meteorite. It weighs about, uh, I don't know how many grams, okay? He gave it to me. It's worth about $400. He gave it to me. He says, oh, cool, you need something to hand out that's a little bit bigger than what you're doing, okay? All right? See these things here? Catch a fallen star, how to collect rocks from space. Do you all remember where this came from? This one here? Nope, 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 nope. This was an insert in astronomy magazine okay because i do the space rock one i happen to see one of the astronomy magazine people at one of their conferences a s conference and said something about doing events like that and he goes i said can i get one of those guess what i got a case of a thousand of them in the mail so now every time i do a comet program or a meteorite program i hand those out how to collect meteorites how to do this stuff like in here we we've we get a, uh, got a, bo a bag here that says, I think these are earth rocks. I think these are meteorites. I'm not sure about these rocks, okay? I do a game called Guess the Meteorite, all right? In here are, this is my favorite one. This is the one you should see in all the movies. Hurling towards earth. <laughs> all right, there. That's not a meteorite. That's a piece of pumice from, from a lava field or something, okay? But that's what you see. It's all jagged, got holes in it and everything like that. That's what you see. That's what they think meteorites and asteroids look like, okay? It's an earth rock. But what I do is I have a square, and in fact, I have it here, all right? This is from the thing. I have a square here. I have 12 little squares on it, big ones, little ones like that. Can you see that? Okay, there you are, okay? I put 12 rocks on there. Four of them are meteorites. Eight of them are not. I have them guess. I have them look at them, play with them. I got a little magnets, a little magnifying glasses. They can look at them. They can do everything they want. They write down on the piece of paper their name, all right, or hand it. Did you guys see that yet? Okay. They write on their name, and they try and guess. If they guess all four meteorites, they win a meteorite. I gave away, what? You give away meteorites? Sure, I give away meteorites. In fact, look, here's my piece of paper that you, you know, you write your name on, okay? Yes, because the same person that gave me that, that uh, big chunk of meteorite to show everybody gave me a bag of, I don't know, where here. Yes, magnets like this. They've got, they're from Canyon Diablo. It's actually Dave from St Sky Zones who was the guy that gave me that. He gave me a baggie, a lot like this, about that thick, full of chunks, you know, Pits, pieces, chunks, bits, what's ever left over, okay? So they're, they're worth two or three bucks. They're not worth a lot of money, but it's a genuine meteorite. This space rock kit gave me that ability because he saw me do this program. You know, it wasn't a nice guy network they gave me. Now, they do give you some meteorites, all right, that you can use in there, and that's what I use from them, all right? They do that to do that, to let you do that, but because I was doing the program, somebody saw it and gave me it was probably a couple hundred dollars worth of meteorite chunks, you know, to, uh, to hand out, to give away. Would you have gotten that if you'd been standing out there going, well, we're going to do meteorites, and uh, this is the type, and this is the kind, and, you know? No. You're doing interactive. You're playing guess the meteorites. You're passing this thing around. You're, you're destroying entire cities with this, okay? All right? Yep, yep, yep. Now, I put in for one that when we were doing this, this activity or working on this activity, I said one of the things that I did before I had that was I would take a pan of, still, okay, I would take a pan of chocolate pudding, 
All right, I'd take a pan. I'd put vanilla pudding at the bottom. I'd put chocolate pudding on top. Then I'd take gummy dinosaurs and put them all around the top. And occasionally I'd bury a half a dozen or so in between the layers of pudding. And then I'd have all the kids gather around now. So we're going to watch an asteroid's going to crash into this landscape. All right. And I'd have them all bend over. And I'd take an Oreo cookie or a big coconut ball. And I'd say, you got to get in. you got to watch. It's going to be quick. So I got all the kids leaning over like this. You know, I'm going, okay, now here comes the asteroid. The dinosaurs are having a good day. And all of a sudden I, I throw that asteroid in there as hard as I can into the chocolate pudding. What happens? Pudding goes everywhere, okay? And you get the nice little, you get the nice little lunar landscape because the vanilla pudding comes out. Now we got to take our spoons and go archaeological looking for fossils, okay? We get to eat all the fossils we find, okay? Of course, the kids got pudding all over and everybody's like that. We do a similar one with the Night Sky Network with their toolkit. It's called the Flower Craters, okay? The flower craters. Got a little pan there. You got flour on the, in the bottom, and you put cocoa powder on the top. You take little rocks, and you throw them in there. They make little craters. If you, get a, if you ever get a chance, turn out the lights, turn on a black light or a strobe light, and do that. You can actually see the dust go, you know. Yeah, strobe light. You can see it land down there, okay? I've modified it slightly uh, to make it what we call pa personal pan moonscapes, okay? We take a pie pan we fill it up with plaster paris we spray paint glow in the dark or gray paint on the top and then we take we put on our safety glasses we take our little rocks we've been picking up and we throw these rocks as hard as we can into the plaster paris they make craters and then they dry now if i'm really interested i'll after they dry i'll take glow in the dark spray paint and spray the inside of the crater because now they're in their room they glow but that's one of the ways it's Shows you how space rocks impact the earth. This is all done through the toolkit. Okay? You don't got to come up with these ideas. They did it for you. All right? Scale, uh, scales and systems of solar system. Scales and sizes. We talked yesterday when we were doing the pocket solar system about the problems with scale models, right? Usually you got a picture of a sun. If you got a picture of the sun, you got a picture of earth, and they're this far apart. To make them at the same scale is really difficult. All right? Excuse me. For example, if the sun is that one meter, again, I told you the earth was a one centimeter ball 120 yards away. Pluto is barely the head of a pin 2.6 miles or 2.9 miles away. A little bit difficult to do. But if you got like a walk or the drive from and up here or something like that, uh, we've got a place where we do it occasionally where the road comes down to the lake and goes up the other side. It's a little over a mile and a half, one, one side of the valley to the other. We have the sun over here, every correct distance. We have the different planets. Sometimes we have telescopes at one end or the other, so you can look back and see. Uh, by the way, in a mile and a half, you cannot see the sun, even though it's a meter across, okay? You think you might see that little red dot or that little orange dot out there. You're not going to see any of the planets. You can't even see the earth from the, from the sun, okay? So they got these little walks. They got all this stuff. You can have them do it through the solar system, Milky Way or Universe Galaxy, while they're at the telescopes, I'm going here. What did I see? I, oh, I, get to, I, I saw Saturn. I get to check it off. I saw the Andromeda Galaxy, or I saw the Orion Arm, Orion Spur, and Orion Nebula. It's in our galaxy. Did I see another galaxy? They check them all off. They come back to you. At the end, guess what? You give them a prize, a picture, a poster, a card, anything. All right? But you've got to have that stuff to give away, right? Where are you going to get it? If you're a member of the I'm going say if you're a member. When you're in the Night Sky Network, they find you out there. You can say, walk up to somebody at NASA and say, hey, I'm a member of the Night Sky Network. We're doing a program so-and-so. You got anything I can hand out? They'll give you 1,000 pictures, 700. You know, you wouldn't believe my wife wants to know when she's going to get her garage back from all the astronomy stuff that's stored out there. And I said, two weeks after I die or as soon as you throw it away. Okay, so, all right. Shadows and silhouettes. Making eclipses. These, they, they, they send the yardsticks. They're the foldable kind. They don't work real well. I like the, the long ones, so we converted them real quick. But at least those will ship. The transit. We did more, so much stuff with the transit and the eclipse. There's banners here. Ask the star forms. How to survive a supernova. All right? We got, we bend the space and time. We got the, uh, the bucket. The, the bucket with the spandex, and we put heavy balls on it. What's your connection to the elements? Would we live without supernovas? Things along those lines. Glass and mirrors. How to do, you know, celebrating 400 years of telescope. Here's what he saw. Here's what you see. You can draw in what you see. 
Give them that sheet of paper. Anywhere on the back or in the front or the side, you can talk about your club, your letter, your letterhead, whatever it is on your club to get them out there. Anybody ever do this experiment? Comes in through here, bounces off the mirror, and you see it through there. How does the telescope work? I use uh, uh, the one that I have there is a, uh, a little neon dolphin I got at Walmart for $5. You turn it on, and it's a little blue-shaped dolphin. You put it on there, you move it around. Whoa, why is it upside down? Why is it left to right? What's happening to it? Why is it bigger? Why is it smaller? That's how telescopes work, okay? And then they had one for the Eclipse Special. You got all of this with the Eclipse Special. One, two, three, 250 glasses. Uh, experiencing the uh, posters and things like that. How to do it. And through generation, a, other, a, bunch, a whole bunch of other stuff. Stuff, tons of stuff, okay? And there are always, and each one of those is also a way to durable vinyl banners. Look up there, yep, 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 yep. And now they've sent out the, the uh, instructions on how to make those banners, those, those PVC poles, all right? Unfortunately, I'm the kind of guy, I modified them already because they got three different banners, three different setups for the different posters. I just use longer bungee cords. I've got them all on one, one frame. All right, of course, now, you know, I got this huge frame sometimes, and I've got this little nice guy network banner in the middle of it. <laughs> okay, but it works. Yeah, I can put two in there if I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They also give you something to, what's one of the problems with doing outreach? Burnout. Why? Because one person's doing it. Now, having been a salesman in my life, we found out that giving people money, bonuses, and stuff for, for sales performance is kind of okay. All right? They, they'll do some effort. But when you give them recognition for an outstanding job or being the salesman of the quarter, picture on the wall, employee of the month, whatever it is, guess what? They're willing to work harder for that than they will for the $2,000 they would have got for doing the same thing, okay? Outreach pins. Every year, if you do, I think it's three or more events or six or more events for the year, anybody that's done five hours worth of outreach, you send their name in and you get, the pins are $2, all right? They'll send you these pins. I've got every single pin they've ever sent out. Okay, my kids, my sons and my daughter have almost every single pin they've done because they helped out, been helping out. There's the night 2018 meteor shower one. Honey, I'm home. I'll be home late. Okay, All right. So this one here, 2013 glows in the dark. There's the Kepler mission one, insight to Mars. Okay, things along those lines. You can see all of the different things they do. That's something you hand out. You recognize them. You give them a certificate. We have, we have roughly 85, 80, 85 people in our club, okay? Active members, that type of stuff. We give out about 25 to 30 pins every year. That's all that people says. I did my five hours. Do I get a pin? Sure. <laughs> yeah, great, great. They call me up and say, hey, can I... I send out a thing saying, hey, we're going to do the uh, Carroll County Fair. I need three people a day for six days. I'm going to, I only need three. I only need, first three get to do it. The rest of you are going to have to wait until I see if I need something else, okay? They redesigned their website. I'm going to go through that a little bit. That's part of my job as a mentor is to go around and help you guys with the different things in there. There's so much stuff in there. It's, I could take weeks. Actually, there's a week-long training course if you want. I can give you one. Club events. Uh, Brenda is always telling the people that you are on vacation. You're in West Virginia. Well, what do you want to do, honey? I don't know. Hey, I wonder if there's any astronomy programs. You put, go up to the Night Sky Network. You put in your zip code or wherever you're at. It'll give you every astronomy club within 100 miles. Tell you which ones are doing something, which ones aren't. You know, Events in your area, for example, here. Uh, public viewing night, Friday night. Public viewing, Del, Del Vale Star Party, whatever it is, okay? Right. We get people who come to our events because they saw them on the Night Sky Network. They just Google, oh, I wonder if there's anything astronomy to do. Or my son's interested in astronomy. Guess it takes them to the Night Sky Network because that's a JPL NASA site, so it pulls it up a lot of times. And they go, oh, look, the Westminster Astronomy Club is having whatever it is. In fact, Thursday night when I get back, or this week when I come, Wednesday night's a club meeting, but Thursday night we're doing a breakfast I'm sorry, desserts and discourse 
with Alex from the, he's the director of the heliophysics uh, uh, division at NASA Goddard. He's giving a talk on the Parker Solar Probe. The bakery, Jeannie, Jeannie Bird's Bakery, is giving the desserts. And we're setting up telescopes before, after, and during, okay? In conjunction with the Westminster Library fundraising program is what it's all for, okay? Because he found us on the Night Sky Network. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to take you to the website here the last, oh, yeah, last five minutes. Yeah, oh, you can change this all the time, all right? Again, outreach resources. Uh, a lot of times they have handouts, printouts, and if they get stuff, actually a lot of times they ask me if I've got stuff, but they hand out stuff that you go there and I go, oh, look, Kepler. I'm, Kepler's making all discoveries in the news. They have 550, they have 50 to 100 Kepler posters they'll send you for free, okay? So you, now you've got something to hand out, right? Talks more about the network and getting the videos, how to join the network. You guys are part of this network. Your name is on there. You just don't do the paperwork. That's right. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But now, just recently, we started with uh, NASA and the Girl Scouts have now started a push for their astronomy badges uh, on the long lines. Like Girl Scouts, I Heart Astronomy, things along those lines. There's a whole setup just for them. Okay. Right. We do a program at the Air and Space Museum, Ubar Hazi, okay, out there in, uh, what's that, Lees, Leesburg? Where? Dulles. Yeah, Dulles Airport. Yeah, right, y'all know where Dulles Airport is. There are five to 8,000 people there that day, just that day, with three to 4,000 of them being, being uh, uh, Girl Scouts. Right? Because we have kits, we have activities to do. We set up tables inside. We set up telescopes outside. If it's cloudy, snowing, which it has been before, or raining, we bowl the telescopes inside and we have it. We have so many people at our tables that the fire marshal has asked us to move, to quit. I go, what do you mean quit? He said, well, we got, table, we got table on the other side, table on the other side. So many people trying to get to our activities and do them or, you know, everything that they, people cannot get down that main entrance, right? And when you go in the front door where you come down and get those ramps, we put us up on either side. You can't get through there. So they moved us to one side. So we got both tables on the same side. Now we got people trying to go around that way. What are you all doing? They couldn't get by. So they actually asked us to, we had, had to shut one table down. All right? Alien eyes is what we ended up doing. It was pretty cool. All right? Again, this is all from being a member of the Nice Sky Network. Growing your astronomy club. Those are the videos. If you, ha you, have, if you have all this to your to your for your use for your availability it's like oh yeah i have a uh i have my transmission on my car is automatic but i like shifting gears okay well you do you can do that but how i oh, just put it in drive and go all right or just think if i look at it this way we're talking about photography stuff what if you could take a picture of something in your telescope download it into this web uh, this machine or this PowerPoint or whatever webs whatever the I don't see I'm not technical about that put it in here in this program press the button and it does everything for you and it comes out looking like Hubble pictures or you know processed Hubble pictures if you want to call it that and you didn't have to do anything with it but put it in there and add a couple of things okay handling difficult questions and difficult people okay I'm one of those people okay all right how to connect with kids Getting started with outreach. Simple videos, you watch them. Just five minutes in your program. You know, where are me? Hey, first thing we're going to do after we take care of this part, before a speaker or after a speaker, whatever it is, we're going to watch a short video on outreach. It makes it so easy to do. We do this a lot. Almost every meeting we have at least a five to 15 minute program. Although sometimes we get new toolkits. That's the whole program that night. Questions? All right. Night Sky Network, astrosociety.org, NASA. See, there we are on the web, nightsky.jpl.nasa.gov. Okay. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Night Sky Network. I don't know about you guys, but this is the way you connect with people under the age of 50. Okay. All right. If you happen to notice, most people in this room are over 50. No, I'm just kidding. Not all of you. All right. It's a graying, it's, we're, it's a dying profession. It really is. Okay. Because most of us are getting older. Uh, I mentioned that Brenda's involved as the president. We now have more women and more teenagers, more kids, more people under the age of 30 
in our club than we've ever had before. Okay? All right? Because this is how we're putting information out now. All right? Uh, it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, and Instagram. And by the way, there are cards that have all this information on them. All right? So, I didn't check to see what my time was. How am I doing on time, sir? Okay, all right. So I will ask any questions, and then let's see, where am I going? Get over here. Thank you. Any questions? I'm actually going to pull up the website just to show you guys. Uh, not NASA funded. Okay, not NASA funded because the boys, scouts, say you have to have, and you, this may be mostly correct, may not be completely correct. You've got to have a trained instructor to do a merit badge. You just can't come find your local astronomer, point at some stuff in the sky and say, oh, I earned my merit badge. Okay, you've got to be certified by, or I don't want to say certified, but you've got to be maybe certified by Boy Scouts of America that you can do. That's me. That, so you know what I'm talking about. Right, 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 right. Okay, with the Girl Scouts, Girl Scouts don't have that restriction. Because for years, I've been doing the Boy Scout programs. In fact, I have Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts all the time call me up and say, hey, can you come out and do a program? We're working on our merit badge or our belt loop or whatever it is. I say, sure, a few dollars, I'll go out there. <laughs> For a few dollars, I'll come out there and do it, you know. I tell them, or you can come to one of our free events. I call them our free events and do that that way. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this one real quick. I'm going to get out of the twin screen stuff and just duplicate it. All right. Hey, it worked. All right. All right. This one here, this is what the public, this is what I call the general public is. You log in over there, clubs and events, nice guy. Where are you at? Send in your zip code. 37,000 events, over 4 million people reached. Scroll down a little bit. All right, events in your area. They don't know where I am. They think I'm somewhere up. I could be, yeah, clubs near you. Arkansas, Maine, so again, unknown area. Girl Scout, science badge resources. Click on those buttons. Get the widget. Free stuff. What's going on in the sky at night? Okay. All right. Catch that. How to catch the young moon on September 10th. Things along those lines. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to our website, Westminster Astronomical Society, where you are. There you are. Okay. All right. It's still, we just switched over here the other day. All right. Oh, look what's over on the right hand side a banner. Okay. All right. Comes up there talking about things along those lines. I click on this outreach calendar event. All right. Takes me to the Westminster Astronomy Calendar at the Night Sky Network. Okay. Look. AS AHSP. Look at that. Planet 730 planets and four more events. Eight o'clock, Cunningham Falls, Cunningham Equinox, Fun with Physics. Oh, even that, now that's my that's home, that's private. Notice it says private. That means that is only seen by that's all they see. They can't go anywhere else except for club members. All right. So if you have members only events or like this is for a, a homeschool group, occasionally I need help with it. But other than that, it's up there doing all those things. It's called fun with physics. But we do astronomy programs on there. There's our club meeting. There's the dessert and discourse. You know, there's a webinar on the moon. Uh, come back over here. There's a bright bunch of different things here. Let me back up a month. Oop. I told you I'm going to keep tripping over that. Okay. You get into the variety of stuff you can use it for. Let's go, let's go to July. Here we go. All right. 31 days in July. Count them up. There are 41 events being done in those 31 days. Okay. Carnivals, ca space camps, Croydon Creek, Strong Camp. Look, notice it says canceled. All right. It got canceled by the city, not by me. All right. All right. Uh, Mars, closest approach. Canada County Fair. A AAPT, Night Sky Network Workshop, Carnival, Planetarium Show, Soldiers Delight, Short Leave Science Fiction Convention. Okay? All those things are on there. People find it there and they come visit you. Okay? Let's see. Outreach resources. All right. Activity keys. Again, you go there. Things along those lines to look at. What are you looking for? Popular activities and resources. Astronomers are very young. Web plan hunters, mysterious stars of the galaxy, NASA wavelength. More activities and resources, okay? 
You don't have to reinvent the wheel. They've done it for you. It's really cool the way this works. I'm so excited about it. All right. All right. So now we go there and I'm going to go back up here about the network. Ha! Clubs and events. All right. Again, it, it brings you up to a general calendar, depending on what your zip code is. All right. Somebody get, look. Oh, wow. Too many of them. Give me a zip code. What's the zip code? 22201. Was that Arlington? Hey, look at that. What's happening in the Arlington area? All right. Let's see. There's the monthly meeting of Fairfax Community. Was I club meeting outreach Shenandoah? July astronomy at the library. Clubs near you, National Capital Area, Northern <gasps> Novak. Hey, y'all be proud. Okay. All right. Every astronomy club with 100 miles, different colored buttons tell you different things. Okay. Which ones are having activities, which ones aren't. This is all from the general public. If I log in, then I have a whole, yeah, whole gamut. I have a whole orchestra. Right now we're just talking about the, vi we're talking about two cellos. Okay. <laughs> right now we're just, you've seen two cellos of the whole orchestra and we do all the rest of that in there. Uh, again, the night sky planner, outreach resources, and things along those lines. There's so much in there that it, it's really hard to go over it all at one time. Okay, but there's the sun. You know, you've all seen this. What's what's up in the sky? Sky maps, clear sky chart, how to spot the space station. You know, all right. You can bookmark it. With at, oh, look at this afternoon forecast. Tonight, scattered showers. Tuesday, chance of showers. Tuesday night, slight chance of showers. Wednesday, and that's for Arlington, by the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course, if we probably looked at ours, it just says, forget it. <laughs> Rain, snow, fog, whatever it is. How to catch the young moon on September. What's today? 10th. Hey, so run outside just after sunset and see if you can see the moon. <laughs> well, of course, unfortunately, with what we got out there tonight, you'll be lucky if you see the sky. All right, so any more questions? Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I understand what you say because it has a sign up in there. But when they click on ours, it says you are not a member of the Novak. You are applying for membership. OK, and it says, please go to the website, our website. And it says there pay sign up and pay there. That's and It tells them that at the front. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, most of the time it doesn't, and, uh, you know, some other times it does. Okay, there we go. And my last cartoon is the UFO caught on tape. Okay, okay. So, all right, if there's no more questions, then I am done, and thank you for your patience and attendance today. Who? The tractor beam? I have no idea. I can't go back to it. No, it wasn't Calvin and Hobbes. It was somebody else. Yeah. Foxtrot and Calvin and Hobbes, and occasionally I find stuff like this. Uh, I actually have this set up to where every 10 minutes, when I'm not doing an event, every 10 minutes it scrolls through to a different one. I've got like 40 of them. I've got one that shows the uh, st uh, Star Trek hanging outside of a planet. All across the planet says free Wi-Fi, and uh, guys, the engineer's going, I think it might be a Romulan trick. <laughs>